two back-to-back -back episodes of insane hype and uh, the hype is there, man. This show is actually one of the great animes airing this season. The whole Edward versus Will fight and I, even like the parallels between the old war with the dwarf being able to reach the mage with the hand and getting their recognition. It was amazing. The hype fight scenes are so good. It's just, could you imagine if he just had the sword from the beginning? Wouldn't have it even close. I think Edwards finally realized that Will is legit. It sucks to admit, right? It's like that feeling of the person you hate the most actually has a good take and you're like, God damn it. Now, I think that he is... I keep making comparisons to Snake from Harry Potter, but the more I think about it in Anime Land, Karego from Irumakun, Welcome to Demon School, that's even a better comparison. Almost like a tsundere mentor that looks like he hates you, but is kind of rough and cold just because that's how gloomy and dark he is, but he actually does care at the end of the day. I think that Edward's going to be a perfectly fine person in the future. Now, we are going to find a new character, I think, right? There is a new character that was shown at the end of the last episode whose gender seems a little bit ambiguous. I think that we might be getting a trap. Let's begin today's reaction. This is the same replay scene of Elfie that we're gonna get. And this is probably the extent of Elfie content in season one. Like, we're not gonna go to the top of the fucking tower in season one. We're not gonna get anything of Elfie, bro. It's just gonna be the same flashback scene over and over. The promise goggles. See? This is how Rachel should have done it in Tower of God, bro. Elfie left with positive remarks, made a promise, and left. This bitch Rachel, bro, she fucking just dropped us. And now? Okay, she's ascending, I think. That's her sensei. He making a declaration. Okay, anytime characters say this, I always like to hold them accountable. It's like, UK, you are never gonna cry. Sobbing like, being pathetic and sobbing like I am, he'll never do it again. Okay, you better never fucking cry then. Episode three, no title. Slumland Street. <laughs> this entire place is just called Slumland Street. <laughs> just call it the fucking ghetto. Oh, he's a paper boy too? Damn! He spends the mornings before he go to school to deliver paper? The hustle, man. Oh my god, the recovery! Holy! And Kiki at the same time! Elfie. That's right. That was like the two conditions, right? You either earn enough credits to become a Magia vendor, or you create entirely new magic. Which sounds fucking crazy. Elfie did that. And then the next closest to Magia vendor status right now is Edward. No one else is, right? And he's doing it through credits, I think. What kind of magic she create? She's the first to achieve the remarkable feat of inventing 12 magics. So like, even the rules of becoming Magia Vendor by either, you know, credits or creating magic, she's also the only one to have ever created the original magic. And it says 12 magics. Sounds like, is it one magic, but it's called 12 magics? Or did she create 12 separate magics? I don't know. Oh, a chance to see her? Wait, is this a chance to see her early then? 
This is the new character I was taught, Rusty Noman. They sounded like a girl last episode at the end. Engineer? The most masculine voice actor ever. Oh my god! Oh, I knew he was strong. I knew he was physically on point. But this body, holy shit! He is carved like a Greek god statue. And the scars on top of that too. He is ripped ripped. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Bread in mouth as you run out to school being late, cute anime girl. Such a fucking cliche, but interesting dynamic between these two, huh? Obviously a guy, but very feminine. Magical engineer, roommates, childhood friend also, or just by chance they met here. Maybe this person doesn't really know Elfie. As well as, you know, Will. Whoa, lore. That was pretty generic of an explanation. But this is pretty important, huh? Mage Queen Mercedes, one of the great pioneers once said, right? One of the great pioneers. There's multiple great pioneers. What was the... I, I, fuck, I have to go back to episode one or two actually understand the lore. Do you guys remember how this like even place is created? Like the whole concept of Magia Vendor and the tower, right? Of like, weren't, weren't like really, really great... Were they the pioneers? It's like some amount of pioneers like created this shit. I forget. I need to go back to episode one and two and figure that out. Fire magic. Guess who it is? It's that piece of shit. He still hates us, bro. Yeah, this guy. Ugh. Ugh. You know what? Hold up, hold up. I think a redemption arc is coming. The way that he views Will here, back then he was even more. Even more. He's low-key respecting Will. Subconsciously he does. Even though he doesn't want to acknowledge. Even though he seems shitty. The tone of this reference, thinking back to, you know, Will fighting, this dude might have the greatest redemption of all time. Triple kill! So clean! Oh, we just saved her out of nowhere? Yeah, who are you? Iris Churchill. Fourth year. New characters. So Elfie's magic is just called Elfie? Ah, what Edward used. Can we create magic though? Because like, we only have a sword. You know? Like, like, we can't use magic. So that option has never been available. It's only through credits. But like, what if... Yeah, exactly. Swords magic. That's what I'm saying, you know? Using magic without magic. Magic through a sword. 
You know, some bullshit like that. Maybe that's possible and we can just skip the line and go to the top of the tower? She built this. Crazy good. Okay! So she created 12 separate original spells. The newspaper said, you know, she created 12 spells, 12 magics. And I'm like, is the single magic she created called 12 magics or is it 12 separate? Bitch created 12 separate ones. A single person, like, rarely ever in history can anyone do this. But she went out and created 12 separately. It's hard for a single person to do even one. But she created 12? One of the greatest ever. Who's this guy? He's got... Hmm. New character? Got like a blue rose? His hair makes me think that he uses ice magic? Can't tell if he's a good guy or bad guy? I don't know, he's smiling. Koretsu getting cooked. Who wouldn't be? I feel bad for Koret, man. Because Koret's such a nice girl. And Elfie is the childhood friend. Childhood friend should lose, yet Koret's the one losing right now. And she'll probably lose, right? Shut the fuck up, bitch. Oh, you are my savior. You're the one who can't use magic. A completely unprecedented no talent. I'm pulling my sword out, bro. We should have let the penguins eat her. Like, goddamn. Have some tact. Have some awareness. Like, could you have not phrased that in a kinder way? <laughs> Fourth year, 14 years old, the nameplate said it. Right, this is the really interesting thing that they kind of like really went over fast in episode one. Because like the sky is not real, it's like a fucking fake sky. That's why the goal is to get to the top of the tower and actually see the true sunset. Because like the sky is not real, it's like a fucking fake sky. That's why the goal is to get to the top of the tower and actually see the true sunset with Elfie. Because beyond the tower, right at the top, you can actually access the real sky or something. What an interesting setup here. The Great Barrier. What are they hiding us from, though? Like, like, why is the Magia vendors intentionally hiding our world? It's like a fucking Great Barrier, right? Like, what is the purpose of Titans? <laughs> like, whatever threat that exists outside must be huge. Is it the Celestial Host? I really need to go back to season, like, the episode one and actually go over that lower part. So the Celestial... I thought, like, the Celestial Host may have created the barrier, but, like... The Celestial Host is the great enemy that we are defending ourselves from. The Magia Vend- And like, in episode 2 as well, remember? Last episode? What did the professor say, right? The goal is to procure as many Magia Vendors as possible to protect us, to, pr to get ready for- I forget the exact wording, but it's like, there's like doomsday coming. There's like a prophesized day that they're preparing for. The coming day or something, the faded day or something, exactly, right? So, one of these days, the skies are gonna come down and the Titan's gonna attack, the Celestial Host is gonna be in, we need as many Magia vendors to fight against the Celestial Host? I don't know. Hmm. The Calamity, Doomsday Man, the faded day. What? How did she get stuck here? Ice magic. So powerful. <gasps> so beautiful. Wow. My goddess. Why is she so cool, man? <laughs> wow, 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 wow! That time we shook Tensei, bro. This is Sarah. Sorry, not this is Sarah. This is fucking Roxy. This is Roxy and Rudy. Why the fuck did I say Sarah and Rudy? Sarah's the girl that got completely just destroyed. 
I feel so bad for her. Anyways, this is Roxy and Rudy. But like, you know for a fact, exactly, like the narrative is exaggerated, right? Like this scene, I bet it's so much more romanticized. <laughs> like the fucking lighting on fucking Elfie right now. <laughs> this is like a movie script, man. This shit didn't actually happen. What's going on, Kiki? What's down there? Something's down there. What the? What the fuck was that? How is that thing just in mid air, just lodged in to this like snow thing? What, what the? Interest. That was cool. Magic? Boss. Boss? 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 Is he ready perfectly right now? That's a lot of eyes. Peak fight scene incoming. So many eyes. I'm down to read this. All right, this is Iris. 14, Wraith, Rizanth, or Rizanth. Oh, interesting, they got, they're got they like different races here too. Birthday, 8th of Shanamoon. They got made up months, 159 centimeters, likes capable people, uh, people uh, uh, who's tried to be capable, dislikes a certain someone her psyche utterly rejects. What? Dislikes a certain someone her psyche utterly rejects. Okay, she got like her ops there too. Uh, currently interested in a particular upperclassman with a sword. <laughs> so you know exactly who that is. Age is blanked out? Uh, no, it's not. Age says 14 over here. I don't think you can read. Deepest dungeon floor reached. Fourth, equip fourth. equipment pr prisma gem wand. Uh, sin uh, her summary is... Oh, and her main one? Well, it got scribbled out and it got... F oh, that's what you're saying. I was reading exactly this, but the paper itself, she scribbled that shit out and put 14 there. Why would she scribble it out and then say 14? She's catfishing about her age because I think that she's actually older than what she is, right? Maybe she got held back and maybe, maybe she's actually 16. Maybe she's the same age, but like she's intentionally like, I don't know, failed some shit. So she got held back. I'm not sure, but it's scribbled out. That's really interesting. Fourth year student at Regarded Magical Academy who loves gossip and tends to follow the crowd. She's friendly, but her social circle is broad and shallow. After being saved by the ice maiden Elfaria, she is defied. Sorry, they feed her in her mind. It is possible that all this information has been modified. <laughs> what do you mean? It is possible that all this information has been modified? Bitch, you just made me read that entire thing and you say, this is all cap by the way. It's probably the age. The age is probably cap, bro. This is an interesting one. Magia Vendor. The Magia Vendor. I mean, they're amazing, yeah? My grandpa told me that each one of them could blow the town away while picking their nose. Huh? A Magia Vendor of Earth? Well, I heard there was one a long time ago. But there's no way nowadays, right? I mean, the Earth Faction. And before, they mentioned the Ice Faction when talking about Elfie. There is an Earth Faction is all doddering old men. And you know, earth magic is sort of, well, plain. It's not cute, so it's not popular, you know? It says Rose Pranit. And there is the five Magia vendors creating the great barrier to protect us from the celestial host. Hmm. Interesting. Six credits? Oh, we can take this. Ooh. Iris, here. Frostrex, 
They call it a dwarf killer. Well, we got magical gear. I'm sure that we can use some sort of magical gear for the long range and open up some kind of weakness and bonk him with the sword and it's a wrap. Dies over. Here's the magical equipment. What's the game plan? <laughs> He's just shooting randomly now. Dude, this running animation. This wire is going to crack the armor? It's working. Oh, Seon will be good against this monster then. Explosion! Explosion! Damn! Why are you spamming Giga Chad? Why are you spamming dubs? What the fuck did he just do? You should be saying roast is a Giga Chad. Motherfucker! That was all roast fucking grappling hook tag fucking, you know, using the thing to wrap it around explosive. That was all roast, bro. That was Will just simply wrap this shit up. You guys giving the wrong guy the fucking credit. This dude had the balls to have this as a name technique. What did he call this? It's a name technique, right? <laughs> What, what is this? Taurus Navalde. Did he just give a name technique to a fucking equipment gear that he's using from Roast right now? Or is the equipment that we're using Taurus Navalde? I'm not completely sure, but the name... <laughs> having a name technique to just like a, a, you know, a magic gear is pretty funny to me, but hey, pretty cool, pretty cool animation. And now Iris has fallen in love with Will. <laughs> yeah, Rusty OP. Him later. Naruto. Whoa! <laughs> yo, yo, yo! <sighs> okay, this makes her character so much better. This makes her character so much better. Cause I'm like, what kind of character really is Iris? Is she just like a cunny girl that's just sticking around trying to be like a damsel in distress? And like in the intermission scene, we saw her age get scribbled out. She's actually not 14. It's something about this seems suspicious, but she just locked in so hard. Naruhodo. <laughs> Lock in. Yeah, he's even better, huh, than the rumors? Report to who? Hmm. That is so interesting. She's not an actual student. She's a double. She's like a secret agent. But we don't really know any other factions right now, right? We don't. Report to some higher ups. Is she potentially outside? Like, did she come here from outside a barrier? I don't know. Like, may, 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 uh, assuming like people outside a barrier exist and she's infiltrated and she. Who the fuck is she responding to? Post credit scene, guys. Mercedes calls the Wizard's Tower, right? Prophet Mercedes or something. Oh. Don't tell me you never even want. She doesn't even wear glasses, bro. These are fake glasses, bro. She never needed. And then she's gonna undo her hair, too. Oh my god. <laughs> Dude, shit. <laughs> what I say about anime girls and no glasses 
suddenly she just looks so much better. I'm just saying, man. I don't hate people with glasses, but if I were to have one way or the other, I'd just take the fucking glasses off. Does she serve Elfie or what? Oh, Yo! These are the Magia vendors! You guys, chat is fucking, you know, obscuring... Hold up. Let me... Let me... Yeah, you, you can see here, right over here. Elfie's right there. Elfie's right there. But like, damn. There's four seats. The middle seat is empty. There's the four Magia vendors. The middle one... Ah, who knows where that person is? Magia oh! Cariot Incendia Wise Man. I'm gonna assume Fire Faction because Incendia. Magia Vend. Eleanor Lios Alf. I'm gonna assume Wind because Green. Zeo Thor Zeus Reinbolt. Hmm. Hmm. His hair color isn't yellow, but his name says Thor Zeus Bolt. Hmm. Maybe he's the water faction, guys. I'm not quite sure what they're trying to imply here. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit, we're cooked. The Celestial Host! Overwhelm us with the numbers and the strength we have right now. So, like, the Celestial Host is not just one single entity. It's pretty much like its own separate faction, right? They have an army. Because if you're going to say overwhelm with us with the number... Well, no, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. Us with the numbers and strength that we have right now. So they're talking about, like, the manpower that we have. This is still seeming like a singular entity, right? Celestial host. It sounds like one person. <laughs> Wait, what's it called them? Promised seedlings? Promising seedlings. That's right, Judgment Day, Fated Day. Watcher. Oh, so she goes down there to scout potential prospects. Oh, maybe we can expedite the process, right? She'd be like, I found one seedling. He don't got no magic, but he uses a sword. And like, okay, bring him up. And Elfie's gonna be like, Will? Oh, I know Will. Yeah, bring him up. Nepotism. Not really. This is all through, you know, individual merit. But here is kind of interesting what the elf said. We cannot allow what's written in the lore to come to pass. The lore. Faded day. So in a book, did it already describe that like, when judgment day happens, we're all just dead? <laughs> Mm, just one. Will. <laughs> Red and green was like, not trash. Rejected, rejected. Middle guy, though. Thor is all there. I like Thor. Thor is like, fuck it. Let's ball. Elfie's gonna say yes, too. Now it's 2 2 decision. Tiebreaker. Where's the middle dude? <laughs> Elfie, come on! <laughs> okay. What a what a what a bitch, man. Yo, this elf girl? She she is so sassy. You better be actually that goaded. If you're gonna say shit like this, like you can only get that privilege if you're like a godlike being yourself. Like I'm sure she's strong, but like really? Is Elfie like you know lower than you? You're talking big right now. <sighs> So cocky. I like Thor though. Yeah, Thor is down for anything. Oh. And this guy's kind of scary. So far, I think the power scaling, like, this dude might be the strongest. Because, like, he doesn't open his eyes. Whenever you have a character that is so smooth and confident, like he just claps and stop the other two Magia vendors from, you know, fighting. And he's fucking closing his eyes and he's crossing his legs. Like these dudes are usually super, super strong. Tournament arc. Oh my God, tournament arc. I love how Elfie straight up doesn't even like sit 
facing like anyone else. Like she is straight up just facing the other way. Look at her. She doesn't want to be here. <laughs> like she's not even facing forward. She's just like looking out the fucking window. Hopefully, just doesn't give a fuck about the politics here, huh? I don't like her. Middle dude doesn't even show up though. <laughs> Wait a minute. No, I'm crazy. I'm crazy. I, 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 I literally just saw this little like lighting glowing thing in the ice. You know, I, I saw this shit. Does that mean Elfie was watching the entire time? I don't think so. But I did see just like a glowing core. And I'm like, oh, monster core. I wonder, right? And then uh, there's this scene where she brings up an ice thing and saying, hey, Will, I'm fucking waiting. The mission? The mission. The mission. The mission. That is the core. Yeah, 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 yeah. So did she just summon the core? Was this the actual core? That's the core she needed. This is the exact same core, though. I'm not crazy, right? Okay, okay, okay. It is a callback to it. Okay, okay. I'm like, I was wondering, like, whether or not this mattered. But, like, I do remember that, like, light in the middle. But, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and so are we. We're waiting forever for you to show up in the actual fucking show. All right. That is today's episode of... Pictoria, holy shit, dude. Third episode, still peak. Still peak. And like, next episode and beyond, yo, I think it's just gonna keep going. The pacing is insane. We're getting a tournament arc. They said Magic Grand Festival, they didn't say a tournament. But based on what they were saying of, you know, the strong will just simply climb to the top, this seems to be a grand festival of tournaments where the top contestants will be maybe chosen as seedlings to become Magia vendor candidates. They're getting, you know, they're getting angsty. They are not in a position to be picky anymore because a celestial host can destroy us whenever they want. Well, if the barrier was to come down and we're desperate, we need new talent. This is not a time to be being picky about, you know, whether or not Will can use magic or not. I don't care. Can you fight? Yeah, you can. Get in there. It's looking like, you know, the ascension into Magia Avenger territory is closer than we thought. You know, it'd be hilarious if Will became Magia Avenger before Edward did, even though Edward right now is the closest of anybody down there. Oh man, I cannot wait for that to actually happen. What were the, some of the core things that happened today? We got to know a little bit more. Uh, we got a child, not a child of friend. Our roommate, Rusty, guy, very feminine, femboy, magical engineer, creates us great, you know, tools for us to, you know, fight in the labyrinth. Um, Shion right now is going through low key what, what could be possibly one of the most uh, hype redemption arcs. The way that he was talking about uh, Will the, and, and during the fights, like, I think he's gonna, I think he's corrected, right? He seems like an asshole, but he's putting his head down and thinking about what Will did in episode one to kind of catch up. So like, Xion might be like an enemy turn good later on and just ends up being like a tsundere friend. The new girl, Iris? I'm like, why are they giving her so much screen time? What is the purpose of adding a new female character just to get cocked? That makes no sense. We already have, you know, fucking, uh, I don't even remember, Colette. We already have Colette. But the purpose of this girl, she is a watcher. A watcher is sent from the tower to scout for potential people that are strong enough to become Magia Vendor. Dude, she, her design was kind of like, eh. She honestly reminded me of Raikiri in, uh, what's it called? Uh, fucking, uh, Chivalry of a Failed Knight, the Thunder Lightning Girl. But the moment that she took her fucking, you know, the glasses off, put their hair down, oh, the voice actor chains, peak design, so hype. We got to see four of the five Magia vendors, right? And there's like clearly the theme to it. Wind faction, lightning faction, ice faction, fire faction. Earth Faction was also mentioned in the transition scene and it kind of got shit on. So maybe the middle person is Earth Faction. I'm not sure. But it's interesting how the middle seat, which is presumably the most important seat, is empty. Didn't even show up to the meeting. Who fucking knows? Yeah, Sword Faction and no Magic Faction. I don't really know. But like the whole world building introducing the Magi Avengers right now. I love this shit. And that's it for me. If you're still here though, and if you enjoyed this reaction, please like the video. Check out the other playlist for more content. And until next time... Take care.